Nursery Park has adult mating pairs and baby dinosaurs, but it also has a dark, evil secret. <laughs> Guests arrive at the park via boat, which docks in front of the Innovation Center overlooked by a lighthouse. The Innovation Center serves as a welcome center where visitors get their park information before entering the park. They exit the building on the other side, and that is where our tour begins. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for another Jurassic World Evolution 2 park tour. I have a lot of beautiful stuff to show you in this park that I think is going to inspire you, give you many ideas for your own park builds, but of course we will also be exploring the dark secrets of Nursery Park. The first thing we're gonna do though is the same thing our guests would do after arrival in our park, which is to go check into their hotels and drop off their luggage so they can walk through the park unencumbered. So that's why we're also going there first. We are getting some nice sneak peeks into the park though, as we as we go over here. The park has a pretty good layout for our guests to follow. There's really no significant doubling back. It's a pretty good loop, more or less. Uh, so I'm really happy with how that turned out and it's just gonna make for a very, a very well thought out tour, I think. All right, so this is the hotels. This is where we would go inside, you know, get a room key, stuff like that. Uh, this is just a nice little terrace out front over here. Let's pretend that this is, um, you know, the ocean that we're looking out over. We have our lighthouse in the distance over there. I think this is a really lovely view and that's why we wanted to make the most of it. Look, we very purposely put like the parasols open in the sunny area and here in the shade of the hotels, the parasols are closed. We thought about that one, folks. Some thinking went into this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go over here and we have a little viewing gallery like tucked away in the back over there. You're only going to see this if you if you do come out to the hotels, but this is where everyone needs to go. I should have hidden that. We don't want to see literal trash as one of the, f like we haven't even seen a dinosaur yet, but we've seen trash, that's no good. Here we go, so this is our first habitat that we're looking into. Uh, the adult species here is Pachycephalosaurus and we're using Drake Rex as the babies for obvious reasons. And that's how it is in this entire park. We have adults of one species and then substitute babies of another species. You could already see aviaries in the background. You can see one of our nighttime enclosures with the monorail roof in the distance. And that's where we're gonna be going. So let's do that. As you can see, we're going back towards the innovation center, back to the start. Square one, you might even call it, back to square one. Um, before we go down here, I want to take us through a tiny loop over to the side. One of the things I had to do to make the park fully populated with guests is actually attach a secondary arrival point right here. Because even though for path connections, this idea totally works, having the entrance on one side of the innovation center and then pretend that guests come through this building, it totally works for path connection but you don't actually see any guests in your park. So that's why I sneakily had to put a second arrival point there. Um, here we just have a nice little seating section, bit of nature, and when we walk around this, it's just very secluded. I like creating moments like that. When we go around it, as I said, we have our first boulevard with shops and such, and we could follow this route towards the monorail station, but we're not gonna be using the monorail for the tour. Not until we have to go back, that is. We're gonna be uh, using our legs and we're gonna, we're gonna just walk through. All right, so this is the first aviary and this is Dimorphodon. For Dimorphodon, we just have the regular Dimorphodons as the adults and then the 2022 fluffy Dimorphodons, which are like, you know, honey, I shrunk the Dimorphodon. They're much smaller. Those are the babies. Aviary, where? Where? Oh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> sorry. And here we also have another opportunity to look into the Pachycephalosaurus habitat. And there is one of the quote unquote Pachycephalosaurus babies with mama keeping watch over there. A little sign up front. I think that's the more important sign, but that's why we have these barricades in front, right? So people, they like, they can't reach that. Ah! 
Moving along, uh. we're gonna be popping into the first aviary over here. We have some more shops because of course, we really need to be squeezing every single dollar out of these people. That's important for the super dark evil secret of Nursery Park. All right, let's go in here. And nothing, <laughs> nothing to see. I mean, the aviary looks good, uh, but I'm not seeing any of our animals. Spared no expense. When we exit, we have a, a little like garden right up front. And if we go over here, using like path to distinguish it a little bit, this is uh, a more separate area. This is, um, well, um, this is a habitat for rocks. <laughs> uh, now, now eventually you might have dinosaurs on your, on your dinosaur tour, right? What should be in here, what is in here, Oh yeah, <laughs> there you go. Euoplocephalus and their babies are the Minmies. I don't see any of the babies. The babies are a little bit shy and that's okay. You know, the babies are, are just hiding among the shrubbery. Oh, look at this dude pointing at the tree. It is a beautiful tree. You're right, you're right. I think he's pointing at the beautiful superior fluffy bush. Our king, we bow to you. We bow to you. Yes, I know, I know. Yeah, you can just, oh my god, you can just see it peeking behind those rocks over there. Wow. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Going up. Uh, we have this kind of like a tunnel almost, but this is where we would reach the viewing gallery that looks into the nighttime enclosure of this, uh, this habitat to our right over here. Speeding it up a little bit. There you go. So using the moderate roof, we created, well, a roof. <laughs> Again, use your imagination. But yeah, this is where the Aranosaurus could come and rest. We're also going to get a look from that viewing gallery over there, which I think will give us a better opportunity to actually see the dinosaur. Oh, excuse me, sir. All right, so running. Oh, I turned my lights on. <laughs> Whoops. Just for clarification, that's where we came from. It's a very busy park. It's five stars, which is which is nice. Very generous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for appreciating my park. You know nothing of what goes on here. If only you knew. If only you knew. You would write you would write some some scathing Yelp review, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Alright. Uh so that's the second aviary over there. And it's actually um, the second of only two aviaries that houses flying reptiles. We have one more glass aviary, but it houses the Uteranus and its babies. It's like our biodome. And of course we have the super dark evil secret of Nursery Park. I can't stress enough how important it is to create like differences in elevation. I think it speaks for itself, right? The flying reptiles in here is Barbarodactylus. They don't have any babies yet, uh, but we've simulated sexual dimorphism with their colorations. The females are just brown and the males have like a blue and orange, very colorful, very attractive, very sexy crest. With that done, we sprint on down. Now, this is where, again, we could go to the monorail if we wanted to skip a lot of cool stuff for obvious reasons. We're not going to be skipping a lot of cool stuff. Uh, so we're going to walk around this lovely, lovely fountain. This is still the Uranosaurus habitat here. And uh, we've created like these little windows that look into it. So you get like sneak peeks into the habitat. But of course, we have a viewing gallery right there. Seating section as well, when you got to go into the void you gotta go into the void but we're gonna go in here there see so oh my god that's just rude now they're in there hold on no no i will not stand for this i will not let you do me like this <laughs> that's rude but yeah here they all are you can actually see that in front here is one of our albino quote-unquote aranosaurus uh, so we use the Jurassic World Evolution Uranosaurus as the adults, and the Camp Cretaceous variants are, at this point, the adolescents. And yeah, we have an albino adult, and there's also an albino baby in here, because, you know, it was genetically passed on. I thought that was pretty cool. Going back to where we were... There, you saw nothing. 
we're gonna be hopping into the tour and we actually need to take this tour to get to the rest of the park so it also functions as transport there we go oh my god you should not put me behind the wheel this is very dangerous but here we go i should uh let me change the camera how did i do that see there just so we can see a bit more also spy on the people in the back of our trucks oops <laughs> let's turn off our superhuman vision so this habitat is like a long canyon with a river down below and we have parasaurolophus uh, wow <laughs> we have parasaurolophus <laughs> which do not have babies yet again we only simulated sexual dimorphism uh, using the regular Paras and the Jurassic World Dominion Parasaurolophus. What's also in here is a species that does have babies. It's the Pentaceratops with uh, Chasmosaurus as its offspring. We're gonna we're gonna go past these guys because they're slow. They're losers. Um, we don't mix a lot of species in this park to sort of maximize on the illusion i guess but for this one because it was such a big enclosure i did go with multiple species we do that twice more in this park um and you know you could you could sort of justify that by saying that you know some animals really do thrive when they're paired with animals of another species you know because they naturally cohabitate and you could pretend that maybe the parasaurolophus they aren't breeding for whatever reason so the the park management decided like hey maybe put them with the pentaceratops so they'll feel protected by the uh, you know the chonky horny <laughs> in every sense of the word <laughs> pentaceratops all right let's hop off yeah no el no elegant way of doing that because now i'm now i'm stuck hold on so i have to cheat again oh this game is still so gorgeous all right so we're dropped off on like this little island it's a really big guest section but technically speaking you know it's a really large area that doesn't house any dinosaurs but we used a lot of nature elements in here and I really like how that turned out. So we have like a little island in the middle of a lake. And then we cross our bridge when we get to it. We're quite slow. Let's speed up actually. So yeah. Our little island, garden in the middle. It's quite natural park. Even though I do think it has some pretty standout guest areas as well. So now we're on this section. We have a cool Spinosaurus skeleton. Really like giving it a moment over here. Giving it the attention it deserves. As sadly so far still the only skeleton in our selection. Here a separated like seating section. I always like separating that from like the, the path where a lot of foot traffic would be. This is the Brachiosaurus habitat. And oh, that's not, hold on. We're gonna, we're not allowed to do this technically, but we're gonna do that because oh, Yeah, and obviously Chimerosaurus is the baby Brachiosaurus in this instance. Let's hop into the viewing log. So that's super cool. You know, gives us like a more immersive experience in this habitat. And of course we also have just the regular viewing galleries right here. Many, many, many attractions to choose from. There you go. And the reason I also added the viewing galleries is uh, literally not so much about seeing the dinosaurs, because I think seeing the dinosaurs is much cooler from the viewing logs. But I want to see the viewing logs. They're an attraction in, multi in, in, in two ways. They're an attraction to experience and an attraction to see, because that looks amazing, right? So yeah, that's why I put viewing galleries here as well, so you can just see the logs the logs i am the log and we gotta keep moving keep moving because it's a it's a big park frame rate is doing okay what are we at 30 something i guess that's okay uh it's a lot better when i close the park but i asked you guys when we did like the feather park tour do you like uh the highest possible frame rates or do you want me to open the park and Pretty much everyone said, yeah, just open the park so we can see the guests as well. So that's what we're doing. And it's not too bad. We're pretty consistently above 30 frames. So we incorporated the visitor center into this uh, guest section. And I did that to avoid it becoming just a huge 
paved area. So we, we put this building in here because it's a gorgeous building, let's be honest. I did block off the front of it with these concrete barriers because there's like this big like stretch of uh, dirt in front of it that we can't really do anything with because of the hitbox. But, you know, with those concrete barriers in front, you don't see that. It blends with the actual building quite well. So yeah, I like that. Just a little hiding it a little bit. Uh, we have another few. Don't put your hand in my face. That's just plain. Stop that. <laughs> okay, so we have another viewing log and that's where we're gonna go into first. But just to show, here's another guest section. See, and this is already like a huge paved area. So I really feel like the visitor center was the right way to go. And this is just another look at the lake, the island in the middle and the tour where we came from. All right, so we're going to hop into um, the log first. And in this habitat, let's see what we have on the other side. All right, so this habitat is another canyon, but this one, the river has dried up. You can see that we have the tour going through. Again, we're going to be taking that because it's also transport. And what we have in here is actually... We'll see that when we take the tour. We'll see that later. So what I've done here, and I think that's pretty neat, is... Um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's like a double layer of attractions. Um, so let me, let me step back a little bit, right? So here, you can see quite well. So you have, on the right, you have the building that takes us to the log. And you can see that bit of fence right there, right? And that takes us back here, this path there so now behind that is the entrance to the log and then here in this secluded area is the tour i thought you know that's yeah that's pretty cool that's a pretty neat layout trick uh let's hop on in uh <laughs> why is there a rock right in front of me <laughs> that's just asking for trouble okay that's just asking for a crash uh, let's switch again. See, ooh, we nearly lost some paint there. Alrighty, here we go. So we're gonna drive through the canyon. It's really more a valley, I suppose, because you know, unmodded the terrain tools are kind of um, gentle. Let's put it that way. But we did our best. You can see the monorail sort of runs alongside it as well. The monorail is key for getting us back to the start, essentially. I really wouldn't recommend taking the monorail when you first get into the park. It's just that once you've reached the end of the park, you take the monorail back to uh, very close to your hotel. All right, so we have to get up there because that's where the station is. Uh, here you go. And then it loops around. So you get just one last cool view into that, into that valley. And behind there, big lake. Yeah, pretty cool, I think. All right. <laughs> oh, she doesn't corner very well. Oh, yeah, we did it. There you go. Bonk. <laughs> no, ah, let me out. <laughs> Oh my god, I totally forgot to tell you what was in here. Cars. Cars are in here. You know what? We have to do this anyway. So here you go. Uh, what we have in here is Dreadnoughtus. And the Dreadnoughtus babies are Apatosaurus. And we also have Diplodocus. And their babies are... Ah, there you go. There you go. Nigerosaurus. He's just harassing the truck over there. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I did quite well for once. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Oh, I love that. Come on. Yeah, I love the logs. They are so, so good. Very, very much enjoying them. All right, let us continue our tour. So it drops us off over here. You can already hear one of the dinosaurs in the distance, the T-Rex. We have a T-Rex, not just one pair of mating uh, T-Rexes. We have mating pairs of T-Rexes. Uh, they're not swingers. They're committed. They're monogamous because we say so. So here we have 
the Jurassic Tour sign. So, you know, from a distance, you can see that that's where we came from. You could go back that way if you wanted. But the most efficient way to go back once you're done is to hop onto this monorail station. And it would take you uh, all the way back to that first one that I showed you. If you do hop off this monorail, as these people are doing, these lazy, lazy, lazy people, shame on you. You have no idea what you missed. But yeah, as you hop off... You see this Jurassic World gate, and behind the Jurassic World gate, it's just a lovely little pond, and we've used our waterfall illusion with the snow paint, which is the trick that I first saw done by Crazy Cat Miri. I've done like a whole video about spectacular terrain editing in Jurassic World Evolution 2, so you can check that out. Uh, for more tips like that. We're gonna go up here. There's a viewing gallery here. We might as well. We might as well look into this. So this is our biodome. And this is where we keep the Euteranus, which prefers a cold habitat. The cold is just really important for them to want to get it on and actually procreate. <laughs> Alrighty. Um... No luck, though, but don't worry, there are- you can see one of them right there just peeking through. There are two more viewing galleries in here, and they all give a very different- Oh! Haha! -ha, gotcha! They all give a very different experience of this aviary. Behind that hill, we also, uh, have a Euteranus. They are literally multiplying. <laughs> oh god! Oh my god! <laughs> There's a third one! <laughs> it's getting out of control! <laughs> What I was gonna say, behind that hill, we don't just hide you Tyrannus like clowns in a clown car. We also have a viewing dome that we can hop into. But yeah, every single viewing thing that is attached to this biodome gives a very different experience. And you can hardly see one gallery from the other because of that hill in the middle. Which I think is a pretty neat technique. You know, if you're gonna attach multiple viewing galleries to one attraction, I think it's a good idea to have the view from all of them be different so that guests would be motivated to check them all out. All right, so now we're gonna hop into the dome. There you go. And the dome is like on this far side of the, the biodome. And it's in this snowy redwood forest. Let's switch the camera around a little bit. See if we can spot maybe the babies, maybe more of the adults. Hmm. No luck over here. Don't worry though, again, we have two more chances. <laughs> the Rex is really calling for attention. <laughs> she is such a diva. Again, just another seating section, fountains, shops. <laughs> Entrance into the void, the dark emptiness. That, th by the way, this is not the dark evil secret of Nursery Park, okay? It is even darker than the Void, which is saying something, because that's just a black pit of nothingness. As if public restrooms weren't scary enough already. Th this is the section where the, the route sort of loops. So eventually, basically we're gonna loop all the way around and we would come back here again to the monorail, which takes us back to the start. We're gonna go over here, but it doesn't really matter. You could take the loop from the other side as well. We're going up. I really love that now that we have all individually placeable trees on all maps, you can just add a couple pops of these uh, red trees, like for a pop of color. I think that's really lovely. Yeah, we're getting to you! <laughs> all right, we're building suspense, building suspense. There they are. Yeah. All right, so as you can see with your eyeballs, in front of us, we have the first T-Rex habitat. Uh, we have these blue Rexes with their teenage offspring, which is substituted by the Changju Saurus, and I matched their skin patterns. Sorry, I was being interrupted. <laughs> I match their skin patterns because it is pretty much a perfect match. Like the tan on the bottom, blue body, red down the spine. Perfect color match. Would you shush, please? I'm talking, all right? Do you want my job? Hmm? Yeah, go on then. What I was gonna say is that... Oh my god, it's just, just gonna keep doing that. <laughs> oh no... 
And now your partner is deaf. Yeah, take revenge. This is peak parenting right here. They're just shouting at each other. <laughs> yep. Yep, they're having a marital dispute. <laughs> I think we need to start them on couple counseling. Because this is getting out of hand. Look, this is not fixing anything. Walk away, okay? Walk away. De-escalate. There you go. <laughs> so, why we color matched the species is because obviously you have to stretch your imagination to make yourself believe that they're the same species, right? And by color matching them, it really helps to bridge that gap. You know, the differences are already plentiful in how they look. And that's actually perfectly fine, you know, uh, babies and juveniles of a species do tend to look quite different, let's be honest. But matching the colors, I think, really helps unite them as one species, and you can just see how well that matches up. Love the Changshu source, by the way. Alright, we spent way too much time on that. Let's hop back into another viewing gallery for the biodome. And here, again, you see entirely different perspective. We use these different kinds of trees. No dinosaurs, though. I'm trying to spot the baby. Oh, there are the babies! There are the babies! And, of course, the babies are Morris Intrepidus. Morris Intrepidus is just the most versatile baby in the game. And I think how you can avoid it being too much of the same thing is just to make sure that your babies look different from one another by changing up the skins of the Morris Intrepidus. So, the white Morris Intrepidus are the Uteranus babies. I've also used Morris Intrepidus as the babies for the other T-Rex pair, which we will see later down in this tour. I think that's how you're going to get the most out of your Morris Intrepidus without it being too obvious that they're all just Morris Intrepidus. All right, and this is the last viewing gallery on this biodome, and this is like our ice lake viewpoint. Can we maybe get a... No. Well, thankfully, we saw the adults in the first viewing gallery so that's a win i'll take it oh and by the way you can see again more of those monroe roof structures those are the indoor habitats for uh this pair of rexes and also for the second pair of rexes we're gonna speed it up a little bit because this is kind of boring you know nothing really happens here we do have a nice view, which is this natural area. Uh, I would like we built this entire park during live streams, and I was really struggling with the frame rates, cause especially while streaming, like running a streaming program alongside the game was really eating up a lot of the frame rates. Uh, so yeah, we had to, we basically had to wrap up this park. So we didn't use all of the square footage that this map provides. Speaking of square footage, it's not a square map. It is just the standard California map. All right, so as you saw, we just have a path with no buildings on it. If you just want to get from point A to point B, you could take this one. But we have a parallel path which takes you by the buildings and sort of like convinces you to spend more of your money to fund the deep, dark, evil secret of Nursery Park. We're not going to do that, though. No, you're never going to get my money. No. <laughs> okay, this is a uh, guest seating section number 379B. We have a window looking into the uh, T-Rex habitat. I hear someone's sinus problems. Oh, gosh, she's going to scream again. <laughs> And we also see the biodome in the distance, like a jewel, a sapphire in our parks. I'm sorry. Look, I have to settle it, okay? Okay, so this is the indoor habitat of the Rex pair that we've already seen. And there you can see their nest. I am I know that not everyone is a fan of this technique, but I really like it. I think it's cool. It's the best we can do, right? So... I think it creates a pretty decent effect. And I use the redwood trees to sort of close off the sides of it. Because obviously we don't have any walls to our roof. Just always the screaming. Always the screaming. When are we going to get silence of the Rexes? <laughs> we have a big attraction over here. Our fossil attraction. And then this is the indoor habitat of the second mating pair of Rexes. There you go. 
not much to see. Uh, it, this is open to their habitat, but it's like blocked off, so it's completely private. Aside from this, you know, <laughs> glass wall that people use to spy on you if you come in here to sleep. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. And now we're gonna see the little babies! Because this, right next to it, is the nursery. And this is where we keep the moral centripetus that are the baby T-Rexes. When they're older, they can get reintegrated. But when they're this young, they have to be in here. And the parents can... The parents can come visit, you know, there's wire fencing there. We can look into it from here as well. That's the lagoon, of course, we were going to be looking into that as well. There you go, so this is a good view of it as well, the little babies. We use the biosyn lamps as heat lamps for our little babies. Here, just another roof overhead. Big concrete wall. I kind of like this effect, it's kind of cool. I don't particularly like people fi- Oh god, oh god, what a- Ma'am, no, you're too young! Oh god, save yourself! Oh no! Oh god, that was traumatizing. Look at all of these scratch marks on the- Oh god! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Look at all these scratch marks, it's from people trying to escape the concrete. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and go through here. So there you see the second Rick's pair, that's the- the buck and the doe. And there's their teenage offspring, Herrerasaurus. Speaking of sinus problems, dang. Little wheezy buddy. Get out of there! <laughs> um... Yeah, we're gonna get a better look at them later. I first want to take you... Don't do that! <laughs> it was like, Rex behind you! <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, let's look at the lagoon first, and then we'll visit the second Rex pair. So there you go. Lagoon, in case there was any confusion. We have a viewing tower to look over the lagoon, which I think is kind of cool. But you can see right there, we also have just a regular viewing gallery as well. So we go up here. Sprinting a little bit. Little secret guest section over here. And speaking of secrets... Oh, we have a secret pathway which takes us to our staff section. And we're gonna, we're gonna go there later. But yeah, this would be a way to access that. And I'm just going to show you. So only staff would be allowed back here. They can enter the lagoon hatchery. And they can hop into this tour, which is not a tour. It's just like, you know, transport to the large staff area. That is away from the actual park. Okay, but we're not, we're, we're not allowed to be here. We were being illegal. We're going to go into this viewing gallery. There you go, going down. First floor, ladies underpants. Uh, eh? Well, we have a shadow. <laughs> Alright, so what's in here? Am I gonna cheat? Let's cheat. Let's cheat. We might as well. What we have in here, these are the babies. Are they? No, hold on, let me check the names. These are the females, excuse me. So the Attenboroughsaurus are the females. Sexy rumbling sound. And the males are the bigger and more ornate Styxosaurus. And you have to squint, but, you know, I, I feel like it works. You know, like, you could pretend that these flaps are just to attract the ladies. I think it works. I think it works. You can disagree, that's okay. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna drop us back down over here. And now we're gonna get into this viewing gallery. Again, it's like off of the main path. Which I like doing. There you go. And there you have it. So there's the other Rex. Where's your lady? Where's your lady friend? Oh, there she is. Now where's your... Your teenage offspring. Running around in an absolute constant state of panic, no doubt. <laughs> but yeah, there is one Herrerasaurus in here, and that's like their slightly older offspring from a previous clutch. Whereas their latest clutch that we saw is still in the nursery until they're a little bit bigger and allowed to be reunited. Alrighty. So. Um... 
yeah, we can also hop in here. Why not? Why not? I'm giving you the full experience. So there you go. Oh, maybe we can see the Herrera now. No, it's um, it's in witness protection. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> I really wish we could turn off panicking. It would be very helpful. Uh, and we also have one more viewing tower right here. Again, showing us Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's a pretty cool view, right? Right? Yeah. Agree with me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so as I said, now that we're done, we're gonna use the monorail to double back. Actually, what I can just do is fly up. So there you go. We've had this entire second. We're not done yet. I'm just showing you what we've sh what we've shown so far. So we've done all of that. You can see you can see the loop. We're, we would hop onto this monorail, which would go around this little mountain and take us back. That's that section over there. Here. Behind us is the secret. But, and this is important to show, the monorail doesn't show it. Like, sometimes you, like, get a peek through the trees, but you can't quite see. And that's because I stuffed a lot of extra trees in there. <laughs> So yeah, you can see that there's like a big aviary building there, but you don't know what's going on. It's very suspect. Yeah, so our guests would, you know, they'd come back here, they finish their park visit, spend the night in the hotel, and then they'd hop back onto the boat and they would leave. Our staff arrives at this dock over here. And this is where I'm going to drop us off. Okay, so right now, we're not guests, we are staff. And we are in the know. We know the super dark evil secret of Nursery Park. And we're gonna be checking it out. Um, <laughs> this is such, this is so dumb. Anyway, so yeah, I built this dock for our staff. And um, th the whole super dark evil secret of Nursery Park was actually like a last second desperate thing to fill up the space that we still had. Because like I said earlier, right, the frame rates for this park were doing quite poor during streaming. Um, so we had to wrap up the build, but I had so much space left that I wanted to do something epic with the space that we had. And instead of continuing the park and adding like a ton more species as we would have done, I've used it for the super secret evil dark secret of Nursery Park. <laughs> and how we would get to that area is via the super secret Hyperloop. So only um, authorized personnel is allowed to hop onto this Hyperloop and actually go to that super secluded section. There's like a security checkpoint there. You'd have to like scan your, your idea. Uh, back here is just like regular staff areas. Uh, so for example, we have like a control center or science center. Uh, we have the paleo medical center. Two of them actually, because you know, we want to take good care of the dinosaurs. Here's the uh, staff transport, and we have a ranger station. You know, just the regular stuff that you might need in order to maintain a park like this. But we're gonna go towards the super secret area. So that would be through here. So there you see the Hyperloop, and we're gonna be following it. It goes underground through here. Da -da 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 -da. And it goes right over here. And this is where I'm going to be dropping us off. This is the super secret dock where super secret things arrive and are taken away. <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> okay, so dropping us down. Let's pretend that we just exited this building. And what we have right here is our Indominus Rex breeding program. Let's go towards the super secret dock first. So... You know, what arrives at this at this dock would be dinosaurs that we feed the Indominus Rex, uh, that we use to train the Indominus Rex. Supplies, all of that sort of stuff, that would all arrive at this super secret dock. We have security up here. And also what would depart from here are the Indominus Rexes that we are selling. That is the super secret dark evil side of nursery park which is that the whole park is just a front 
for an Indominus Rex breeding program. They have two adult Indominus Rexes. They got those on the black market. And they're using those to just create one generation of Indominus Rexes after another. And they're selling those babies to the highest bidder for nefarious purposes. So yeah, that's that's what this facility here is all about. It is entirely surrounded by a mountain ridge, so it's really secluded. Even though it's at the center of the park, it's really secluded and private. Uh, what we have right here, this is like the little area where they do some training, some medical testing, all of that stuff. You can see some cages off to the side. Those were like, you know, the two cages for the two adults. And in the back, you see the cages in which the uh, the offspring is transported because they get sold while, while they are still young. So they will imprint on their next owner, you know, a story like that. There they are. So there is one of the adult Indominus Rexes. And as babies, we use the Atrocy Raptors. Now, why are they in an aviary? Like, genetically, there's nothing weird going on that allows them to sprout wings and fly. They are housed in the aviary because it gives more privacy. It's harder to look into the habitat. And we are in a universe where it's actually really easy to steal a dinosaur from a regular enclosure. One helicopter flies over and shoots a couple of darts. And then a second transport helicopter just picks up the animal, no ground infiltration needed. So the aviary protects these valuable assets against theft. I, I love coming up with stories for, for my parks. Even, you know, this wasn't planned beforehand. This just sort of happens. We're gonna fly into the aviary because uh, it looks quite cool. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's just, you know, it's like a natural environment because science like, the studies have shown that that uh, maximizes how often the Indominus Rex is actually mates and produce, you know, the next clutch of dinosaurs that they can sell. So that's why it's just a nice natural environment, but obviously with plenty of opportunity to keep an eye on them. Oh, they're going to do a, a social. That's cute. So these are our babies. And you can see in the middle here that we have like this outpost there. And what we pretend is that this is reachable using the truck right here. So if we hop into the truck, we have doors on the aviary. They don't open for us apparently. Pretend that they open for us. <laughs> Use your imagination. We will drive through here. There's like this dirt road. And again, pretend that this is an actual functioning door that opens up so they can get in here and uh, study study the Indominus Rexus and its offspring from there. So that is the super dark evil secret of Nursery Park. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you did, I have a full playlist on the channel with all park tours like this. So you can check that out and be inspired for your own builds. And of course, we're building parks like this live every Saturday and we're doing speed builds and tips videos and all of that sort of stuff. So consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs>